Hi everyone, I'm Urban Girl and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a, a bit different from most of the other ones. I'm outside in the gazebo at the moment. Can't really get out and about at the moment due to the restrictions so I thought I would do a wee making project and let you see how easy it is to create some things at home for yourself that you can use when you're out in the field. So if you are interested please watch along. If not then you know, don't worry, I won't be offended. These are all the supplies that I've gathered um, for the project. Uh, wouldn't be any surprise, uh, given that it's in the title. But like many of you, um, we're having to spend a vast amount of time indoors. Um, can't really go out and do a lot at the moment. Um, and I've been doing my best to, you know, keep busy and keep occupied. So this will definitely be a slightly different video from a normal, but I thought I might as well share it. And, you know, if, you, if you're not interested, you know, please do switch off. Um, but um, I thought maybe some people out there might be interested on, uh, you know, how you can create something um, fairly easily at home with stuff that you will, uh, you know, have lying around. So, you know, a good pair of scissors, obviously, any scraps of leftover fabric. And um, I'm using denim because um, it's a really good, uh, strong fabric. Um, and uh, um, from that point of view, you know, it's fairly robust. Um, some paracord. These fabric markers, which are not compulsory. I'll show you where they come in later on. Um, and uh, some hemming tape or... People uh, may also know that as a Bondaweb or Wonderweb. You can normally buy that in the supermarket um, on the kind of emergency sewing kit hair brush type shelves. Um, it's not difficult to come across pound stores, whatever. Um, and that's what we'll be using. Um, and I might use this hook and loop tape as well. Um, or Velcro tape. But I've not decided yet. So that's pretty much the supplies, you know, more or less stuff that you'll have um, lying around the house. And as I said, the uh, fabric markers are optional. You do not need them. So let's get started. So I'm using my scraps of denim fabric and um, really the other main component that you need for this um, is, a, is, a, is an iron, a hot iron and a with the uh, steam function switched off um, because you have you use a, a dry iron setting. You don't have to iron any of your fabric before you do this, um, but it does help it um, sit better. You also don't have to uh, draw or map out any sort of fabric template for this. Um, you pretty much just construct it as you go. So really the main purpose behind it is to make it as easy as possible. Um, and I like to do it um, to try and make it as quickly as possible as well because I don't have a lot of patience for these things. One of the other reasons that I choose um, denim, um, you know, apart from the fact that it's a fairly strong fabric, um, are, um, You've always got, you know, denims lying around that you end up recycling and, you know, they can be used for so many different projects. Uh, and I've made quite a few wee different uh, stuff sacks uh, as well during this time at home. Um, but today, uh, this is uh, more of a, going to be a kind of utensil roll. Um, but yeah, the other good thing about it is you've got the pockets and the pockets can be, you know, made features of the the design but as I said you don't really need to iron it it just makes it slightly better when you're working with the fabric you can use any fabric you've got lying around you don't need to choose denim for it anything at all will work um, it, it, although I would caution um, if you were using, uh, you know, man-made or polyester type fabrics, then you need to be more careful with the iron setting on them. Um, and you need to make sure you, uh, you know, use a barrier uh, when you're ironing on them. 
uh, at the later stages um, because they will melt quite easily and burn quite easily and ruin your iron. So do follow the instructions on the fabric that you're using. As you can see, these are uh, really the, the leftover leg pieces that I've I've cut them out. I've cut them out at the seams and I've removed quite a lot of the seams. The main reason for removing the seams is they're very, very thick um, and they don't um, adhere as well um, when it comes to the bonda web process. So the best thing to do is really just to go ahead and cut out your scraps of fabric um, and assemble uh, you know some of the pieces that you're going to need for it this is pretty much going to be a kind of rectangular roll shape so I'm going to cut out you know squares or rectangle shapes from the denim as best I can it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't really matter if you go wrong. At the end of the day, it's your design. You can use any old scissors, but a really good pair of sharp uh, dressmaking scissors do help, particularly if you're working with fabric like denim, uh, which is, you know, quite thick. So it is harder to cut. You also can be as fancy as you like or as plain as you like with these things. Just really do whatever you want, make it your own. So I'm just going to iron that seam down at the moment because um, that will probably form the top part of the pouch. Now bear in mind for the top part of your pouch as well, you do want to leave a bit of space at the top here so that you can insert uh, either a cord, a paracord drawstring or, um, you know, anything like that that you want to insert. Um, I'm going to leave a space in that uh, for a different reason, um, but I'll show you at the end uh, why I did that. But I still need to make sure that I kind of, you know, make that pocket. So I'll get the bonder web and I'll show you how to do that. So just get a piece the size of where you need it to be. Um, and in this case, I'm only going to cut it to half. And I'll show you why. Because if I use that thickness to bond away that, I wouldn't have any space. So what I'm doing is cutting the bond web thinner so that I can make a thinner bond and that will give me a space in the inside and I'm going to put that right at the edge of the fabric. So once you're happy with where that is, just go ahead and place your dry iron on the seam um, and press that down. 
and that will help the bondo web to do its magic. So I have chosen another piece of fabric which is going to be the piece um, on the inside. That's just going to go somewhere here. And again, you just get your uh, bondo web, put it approximately where you want it to be. Cut that to size. Put your fabric on it. So for this particular design, remember, what you're going to do is you're going to do the two edge seams and the bottom seam and you're going to leave this top seam open because that's going to be your pocket. So just start by doing your two edge seams. And then you can do your bottom seam. So you've got the basics of your pocket here now. Well, what you can do at the moment is uh, you can just um, trim off some of the excess fabric at the edge. This is really just for cosmetic reasons, just to um, just make sure you don't cut too far to the seam. But this is really just to make it cosmetically as square as possible or as rectangular as possible, sorry. But again, it's not necessary, it is just cosmetic. just tidy that up so here you have now your basic your basically uh, some of the just check your seam tape if there's if it doesn't seem to be sticking again just run the iron over it again you do especially denim you do need to make sure you give it a good press to get the, the tape bonded So just to give it a bit of a nicer finish on the inside pocket, what we'll do is 
we'll just fold over a bit of that excess fabric so just fold that over doesn't need to be exact just fold it over however you like doesn't need to be straight and then get some more webbing tape Just pop this in the inside bit of the seam. Really made a mistake there. As I said, it doesn't really need to be perfect. Just, just a wee bit, just to tidy that seam up. As best you can. So the next step after that is just to create some individual pockets for your for your tools and things to go in. So just decide yourself whatever width you want. I mean obviously you know whatever tools you've got better than you know what mines are. Um but I'm just going to make a few kind of random size pockets here. So I'm gonna have quite a big one at this side. So it's just as easy, it's just as simple, just put your tape in there where you're going to sandwich them both together. So that's a fairly big pocket there. Um, and just do the same along the rest. It does obviously move about a bit as you lift it backwards and forwards. So it doesn't have to be exact, just whatever you want. And again, just run your iron over them. Try not to get any tape on your iron because it does stick to the iron and mess the iron up. You need to kind of scrub that off. which means it sticks to the fabric. Uh, but you'll find that out as you go along. <laughs> like that. <laughs> So I pretty much finished sewing up all the seams and ironed on the pictures that I wanted and now I'm just really uh, finishing off the edges the way I want them. As I said before, 
you can do whatever you like for your edges. Um, you can put a uh, binding tape, masking tape, you know, camo tape, anything at all on the edges that you want, uh, just to give them a bit more stability and rigidity. Obviously, with this being a homemade project, it's not going to last forever, but that doesn't matter. So, what I did with mine was I've, I've cut all along the edges here, um, just snipped them with the scissors. Um, and what I'll do is um, I'll just go along and uh, fray them out a wee bit so that it's going to have a frayed edge all the way along. So that's really the plan. I'll just show you a wee quick demo of what I did with it. I'm doing it outside because this is very, very messy. The threads go everywhere. You end up with hundreds of thread everywhere. So I don't advise if you do want this finish doing it in the house. There is another easy way to do it and you can stick it in the washing machine as well. That works uh, very, very well. Over time, this will just fray more and more anyway when you're out and about in the field using it. Um, so it might not look that fantastic when you first use it, but as I said, over time, um, it will fray even more and you'll get a really nice finish. So I'm just going to work through that and uh, continue to fray the edges. Well, there we go. That's it all finished. Um, I realised when um, I came back in the house that uh, one of the uh, sections of the video didn't work. So you did not see me appliquing on uh, the homemade patches that I made. Um, but essentially, the, that's what the fabric pens were used for. Um, these were just some wee designs that I did myself at home. Um, and again, I just used the Bonda web to put the, them on there. So... Again, you can do whatever patches or designs you want. Um, I've also got another one on the outside. I've just put some sample things in it for you to see what I mean. Um, even a wee bottle like that, you know, that you would do your fuel in. So mostly you could use it as a kitchen roll, but I've just put some of my wee bits of kit in there at the moment, just so that you can see it. And um, another sample of some of the other stuff sacks that I made this week out of denim. which are the exact same uh, process. Just decide on the design that you want um, and bond away a bit together. This one is done um, with the right sides facing each other and then turn it inside out. That way you get a neater finish at the edge. Um, but again, just made the wee channel at the top and used a bit of cork as a wee cincher. Um, this one was uh, slightly different. This is just a wee possibles pouch. I'll see if I can open that for you. Uh, this is a complete no sew project. It's really, really easy. That just opens up like that. As you can see, dead easy. Just make some wee channels and run your paracord through it. Just for the likes of collecting birch bark or whatever. And it just cinches down like that. Uh, this one was slightly more complicated because I wanted a barrel shape. So I had to add a circle at the bottom. And then I also put another circle on the outside just to kind of tidy it up a wee bit because it looked a bit rough and ready. So there you go, guys. Making your own stuff, Saxon. We kitchen craft roll mat at home. We recycle denim. Or as I said... You can use what you like. That's mine there, rolled up. Uh, one of the things that I did say to you was I had left a space at the top, um, which I wasn't going to put cord in. So for the purposes of the video, I'll just show you what I meant. I left a space up here and I cut a wee hole here as well. So when I'm out in the field, using this wee hole here, or from the, the ends as well, I can feed a stick all the way through there, put a wee bit of cord on there, and then hang the roll up from a tree. So that's why I've got that channel at the top. I'm just using that stick for demonstration purposes. Well, there we go, that's it. So yeah, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. I just wanted everybody to see how easy it is to create things at home. And when you're out and about in the field, it's nice to have something that's yours, that's unique and uh, you know, that, that reminds you of home as well. Thanks again for watching. I'm just an urban girl.
out having a bit of fun. Bye!